and welcome to Quarantine Question Time, episode one. Are you going to do your best um, political commentator voice when you're asking questions? Well, oh, no, because I can't be arsed. Are you I won't be, be able to keep it up. How about quiz show voice? Uh, For 100 points. What sort of quiz show are you watching? One from the um, 1930s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to try and do I, I asked on Instagram what your burning questions are about us about the podcast about life and on Facebook we're going to try and do 10 questions an episode and I'm going to start with the Instagram ones okay. are you ready um, yeah bring it on question number one what do you think do demons exist or is it just bullshit I'm going to answer first eh, eh. bullshit over to you Dan um, okay, this is very apt considering our episode this week. Um, for me, I think it's real. Um, I think they are real. I don't think everything is demons, <laughs> um, but I do think there are such things. And that question came from Pan Panamod Panomod for life on Instagram. I believe one of our Indian listeners, right? No idea. I think so. Question two from Beauty by Levg. How long has Tiny Bim's Dame Judy been in your life? Oh, I don't actually know the answer to this. I can't remember. Um, We've had her for nearly two years. Yeah. Every two years in August, wasn't it, I think? Or no. I think we've been going out for a lot longer than I keep telling people, by the way. Because I've just realised we've had her for two years and we were together like How two years before that. Oh, I don't know, like three years. No, it's lot, much longer than that. It's much longer it's only, than no, that. It's just it? coming up to four. It'll be four, and, it'll be four in August. Okay. So you're right. Um, she's, we've had her for about two years. Mm. We got her in August. I think it was like August 31st, two, almost two years ago. So maybe yeah. a year and a half. Yeah. Or is it longer? No, it's not. It's Are you sure? Not. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Okay. We moved in here in, in December 18. No. Yeah, I think December. No, December 17. So we didn't have her until for at least six months. So that'd be August 18. Oh, okay. Yeah. Question number three and four comes from Maisie and Mabel and is also randomly Tiny Bims related. Is Tiny Bims an indoor cat or does she go on big adventures out in the big world? She is 100% the most indoor cat possible. Um, we both have this theory that when we, when, um, when we rescued her and Emma spotted her, she was in a little two-story cage and we just think that she now thinks she's in the biggest two-story cage that she's ever been in in her life, and she's perfectly happy with that. To the point with uh, uh, to the point where if we have the front door open and she's in the front room, she looks at us as, as if to say, "Can you shut that door, please?" Or she moves away from the or draft. She moves away from the draft. <laughs> she has never. She has never since we've had her. She's never gone outside. She has never shown any inclination to nope. go outside. You can leave the door open, and she will not go outside. Nope. She is an absolute 100% indoor We cat. have, on the back of our house, we have a little sort of, um, I want to say conservatory, but that sounds really glamorous and it's definitely not, just like a little room that leads to the outside. So we've got where the double glazing ends, we've got like another room and then it goes out to like a wooden door into the garden. Um, we'll sometimes leave the interconnecting door open to that and she'll go, what, maybe four footsteps in there just to check it out and then she comes back in. Yeah, and then and she then... jumps because she's frightened yeah. by everything out there. So <laughs> she's definitely an indoor cat. Um, and this, the next question is still from Maisie and Mabel. If she goes outside, how do you deal with the possibility of her wandering off? I think we've answered that. She won't. I mean, I mean that would be heartbreaking for us. So I don't think we cope, to be honest. I think even if she wanted to go outside, she might end up being an indoor cat by proxy. Oh, I would die if anything <laughs> happened to her. Um, uh, Ashlish on Instagram. Emma, have you had any professional training in acting? No, I have not. I've had no professional training. I did about two years ago, maybe flirt with the idea of going to drama school. And then I realized that I wanted to actually make money. I love acting though. <laughs> like I love it. And I'd like to think I'm quite, I'm quite good at it. She's very good. Um, and that is an unbiased opinion. But it's just not a, I need to survive financially. So I also think... I mean, tell me if I, tell me if I'm wrong. People that are lucky enough to do this, but I feel like if you do what you love for employment, it takes some of the edge off of it. I reckon. I reckon you'd be a bit. I reckon if you're acting full time, it wouldn't be as enjoyable as it is how you currently do it. I guess the way I currently do it, I get a choice in what I'm in, 
you know, I get a choice of what I audition for. And I guess if I was doing it full time, that choice is limited a bit because yeah. you have to be making money. You have to be the hemorrhoid cream girl if you're doing it full time. I know. That would mm. be awful. Um, Rainer, Rainer Nan, Nantes. I'm probably saying these all really stupidly. Do you think this is the beginning of the end of the world? No, I don't. I don't. But certain people in my family do. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say. Um, I guess if you if you go down the end times theory route, then certain things have happened that tick boxes. That's all I'm going to say. Not necessarily with COVID, but in the last sort of 40 years, we're in that point. So... It's a good thing we're not going to go down that route because it's not the end of the world. No, I know. And I'm everybody's going to be fine. Yeah, everybody's going to be fine. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if you're of a certain persuasion, then you might be ticking some boxes right now. But I, I think you might be doing them prematurely. And MZ Benzedrine, would you rather be cornered by a skinwalker or abducted by aliens? Aliens every day of the week. I'd take on a skinwalker. I don't want a skinwalker anywhere near me. I'd be like, yep, come, take me away, show me a spaceship. Drop me back to school. I won't tell anybody because, yeah. No, I'd take a skinwalker any day. You're crazy. Um, crappy face or one American <laughs> Horror Story or Haunting of Hill House. I've seen very little American Horror Story, but what I've seen, I've enjoyed. Oh, the Haunting of Hill House was very good. The longevity of it, I don't know how much there will be. The thing that makes American Horror Story good is that they can do it on something different each season. And so I think they've got infinite potential to capture. They have infinite potential, but the seasons are very hit and miss, I think. Yeah, they are. Uh, I prefer, I think I preferred Haunting of Hill House as like a thing. But I agree with what you say. American Horror Story has Think about your favorite, your most favorite series of American Horror Story. Uh, Which was Coven. Is it better or worse than Haunting of Hill House? Oh, I don't know. Because that's the so question different. that's really being asked. Because it's unfair to to pit one season where they've only had to do one good story against yeah. nine seasons of things where they've actually been hit or miss. I think it's unfair to pick shit like that. So you should probably take it from that angle. And Finn Nui Rawa said, do you think you'll ever visit Edinburgh due to all of its paranormal areas? I mean, if I can never leave the house again, yeah, for sure. If we can leave the house again, we've got some exciting plans for Edinburgh. I cannot say any more, so don't ask me to. But Edinburgh, we're coming for you. When we can leave the house again. <laughs> and finally, board wall smiley face. Hi. What is your opinion on snakes? Oh, well, that's a good question, isn't it? I'm fascinated by them. I've always been fascinated by them since I was a kid. Um... I think I, I think I'm genetically inclined to be fascinated by snakes because my mum, when she was a kid, used to keep grass snakes in a bath in the garden. Yeah, but she also used to keep a hair on her conservatory or yeah. on her balcony. That's true. Like a wild hair. <laughs> so random. But I just think snakes are snakes. Snakes are very interesting, um, and I think we're in privileged position where the the dangerous ones that we encounter are often behind plexiglass. Um, <laughs> I, I think I might feel about them a little bit differently if I lived somewhere where they were potentially in my garden and could kill me. I know that when I was living in Kenya, we went to a place where they were like, oh yeah, we would sit on the veranda, but we've currently got a puff adder nest out there. And I felt very differently about those snakes than I did about other ones, I have to say. Uh, as for me, I'm indifferent to snakes. I mean, they're fine. They do a job in the in the world. Um... I'm not frightened of them. Wouldn't like to be bitten by one. I was going to say stung by one, but that's not how they work, is it? No. I wouldn't like to be bitten by one. They have their place in the world. Fine. That's it. That's our 10 questions. That was it. That felt yeah. like five. Join us again. At some point, I don't know what the consistency of these Can are going to be. Can music first? Where it's like... Dun, 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 dun. At the end. Some like... Uh, in a lot of questions on music. So we could do the um, the 50p movie club music. Yeah. It's not serious enough. Oh, sorry. Does it need to be serious? Yeah. It needs to be like a Big Bang chiming remix. Okay. Right. Well, leave it with me. I'll see I'll what I can do. I'll it on the piano and we'll, we'll, we'll play it next week. Excellent. Okay. And we'll be back with more 
quarantine question time soon. See ya.